Tin is among the most essential and irreplaceable mineral components in the world. The high conductivity, specific gravity, low melting point, and relative abundance makes it a significant element of modern electronics. Look at what we have been staring at while watching this video. The smartphone we are using almost daily, the laptop, also vehicles, and all other electronic goods are using tin as one among important components in the production. Indonesia contributes significantly to the global distribution of tin. It is the world's largest tin exporter and second largest producer. It is a home to a considerable amount of tin reserves, making it the second among the world for tin deposits. Global market depends on Indonesia to fulfill tin products demand throughout the world, such as tin ingot, stained tin, or soldering tin, and other processed products, such as tin plates and tin pipes. Bangka Belitung is an archipelago province located in Indonesia in the southwest of Sumatra Island. In 2018, 1,372,813 people lived in Bangka Belitung. The mining process of tin is relatively simple. It requires simple technology without too much energy. Tin can be found in the ground or a shallow surface, also in the bottom of water flow. The mining takes place onshore and offshore. For small-scale mining, the soil is collected in a place close to a water source. It is poured gradually into a tray and is washed with spring machinery to separate the tin sand from the soil, clay, tailing, and other impurities. Upon being collected, the tin is brought into the smelting facilities to reduce the concentrates with high temperatures up to 1500 to 2000 degrees Celsius. A successful smelting process will produce crude tin with a high tin content. With the whole process, the tins are upgraded to the specifications which are in accordance with market needs. They are printed in the form of ingots with the tin content up to 99.9% .9 purity or produced into solder and other goods made out of it. The trading allows the tin products from Banca Belitung to compete in the international market. Tin from Banca Belitung ends up in big companies and are produced as components for a variety of electronic products. This is what makes tin mining in Banca Belitung involve small and large-scale players with either simplified or sophisticated technology. Among the large-scale players is Peite Tima. As a state-owned tin company, Peite Tima produces tin in a commercial quantity with industrial-scale extraction. There are also private tin companies operating in Banca Belitung. Banca Belitung also hosts large numbers of small-scale miners. There are two types of these miners. Hence, it involves less advanced technology and less producing capacity of tin ores per day. However, the production from artisanal and small-scale mining remains significant. Indonesia's tin was first commercially extracted and produced by VOC back in the 18th century. However, tin had been mined traditionally by local people from earlier time. During colonial period, the governance of tin mining in Banka Belitung was characterized by monopoly and centralization of the management. The profit from the mining was regularly directed to the center at the expense of the local community. The Dutch company signed a contract with the Sultan of Palembang for the monopoly of tin resources. Following the contract, the tin mining was mostly conducted by Chinese laborers. As an implication, the number of smuggling businesses was increasingly growing to cover the financial loss of the tin miners derived from the monopoly. Years following, there were several smuggling activities by part of local people who didn't receive benefit from the mining. The management of tin mining was given to Banka Tin Winning and Banka and a private Dutch company, Belaton Machchapi and Belitung. These two Dutch companies managed tin exploitation in the islands with the main agenda of maximizing the profit rather than developing the local economy. Following Indonesia's independence in 1945, all Dutch companies were nationalized into PN Tambang Tima, later PT Tima, with similar centralistic and monopolistic models. Whoever mines the tin without license or stores and smuggles tin to outside Banka without permission would be arrested. The government even deployed state security apparatus to protect the mining sites and its activities. 
The monopoly by Socarno's and Sohorto's government escalated illegal mining and smuggling activities by individuals and local elites. People had to rely on informal activities. Only several local people were employed as workers in the state-owned company. The rest had to rely on small-scale illegal mining because they had to survive. The decline of alternative economic sectors and limited benefits from tin mining also contributed to the increasing number of illegal activities. In 1997, Indonesia experienced a financial crisis followed by political reform in 1998. This reform significantly altered the governance of tin in Bangka Belitung. It allowed the local community to be involved directly in the tin mining and trading. Through the decree of the Minister of Trade and Industry No. 146 in 1999, tin was no longer categorized as a state strategic commodity. They made use of the opportunity to issue mining permits to private companies and people's mining, bring local government companies forward, and promote a decentralized management system. The regulations aim to increase the total of locally generated revenue and exercise the local government's control over the tin mining, smelting, transporting, and trading. The autonomy of the regional government increased the number of artisanal miners, both legal and illegal. After 1998 and in the early 2000s, these miners did not obtain licenses and performed the mining in almost every region of Banka Belitung. Traders were also free to sell tin ores abroad with the absence of any regulation related to it. A series of environmental impacts were rampant, both in onshore and offshore active mining. As a response to the uncontrolled mining and issues that follow, the government has been seeking to take back the authority of issuing mining licenses to the center. The objective is to boost development of Indonesia's smelting capacity so that local players, as an exporter of materials, might level up their positions in the tin value chain. Central government, through the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources and the Ministry of Trade, play a significant role in issuing licenses and export permits which adopt sustainable tin sourcing. The tin has to pass the certification and verification process against the available reserve, which is done by independent inspection companies. Besides sourcing, the expert provision by the Ministry of Trade also requires the companies to submit their work plan and budget to get approval from the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources. The central government attempts to adapt to the global initiative on sustainable and responsible mining. This requires companies and other relevant players to comply with the goal of sustainable growth and responsible mining practices. In contemporary Indonesia, the demand towards tin would be increasingly growing due to the global interest towards advanced green technology, such as electric cars and renewable energy infrastructure, which need tin as a strategic mineral. Efforts to produce tin and green technology have to take into account the balance between economic, social, and ecological aspects within the governance. Miners, companies, local governments, and the national government must continue the dialogue to find ways of crafting sustainable tin mining in the future.